Storm Messenger. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Hippogriffs! Cowardly! Yes, Cowardly is our time to shine. Yar har har. Yes, it's your time to shine, and it's, well, technically not your one, from what I remember the last time we talked. Like, everybody thinks, oh, since it's the Hippogriff Nation, you came from there. No, no, no. I think that you mentioned you came from Detroit, was it? Ah, uh, I came from the space between spaces. But I am a hippogriff. Just look at my tush. Look at my tush. Look at my tush. Yeah. Look, look, look at my tush. But uh, the tushes on the others, uh, they didn't have any cutie marks. That's right. That means that I'm OG. No, Straight that up, just y'all. makes you a hipster. <laughs> Straight up, y'all. I'll be a real OG hippogriff. Straight out of South Said. <laughs> Word. Oh, God, no. <laughs> and also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. This is why I come back to after so much hell. Oh, yep. Oof. W- welcome to the show. Welcome back, you mean. <laughs> yes. Welcome to the show. We thought you'd like to know. Uh, well. How terrible this was actually going to be? Uh, no, oh, no you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, you have no idea what we have in store for the future. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, soapy man dark. Alrighty then. So anyway, in today's episode review, we are going to review season eight, episode six, Surf and or Turf. In today's episode, the Cutie Map Crusaders get sent by the Cutie Map to Mount Ares to help a young hippogriff figure out where he belongs. So before we head into the review, let's go into first impressions. Silver, what do you think of this episode? I thought this was a fun episode. It was one, I, f- I find it fun when the map is now sending uh, folks outside the main six. And that is very, very enjoyable. Uh, it is also fun to see the Crusaders kind of sabotage themselves as they get swept up in the all the A or B, all or nothing uh, mentality that Terramar is uh, subjecting himself towards. I will say, yeah, it's mostly the hippogriffs are the main selling point. Because, you know, we get to see how they are after the Storm King's uh, intrusion, after his invasion, he drove them away. Now we get to see Mount Eris uh, restored. By the way, am I just remembering wrong? I thought at some point it was called Mount Eris. Eris? 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 Eris, Eris, like the uh, goddess of chaos. They mm. named it after Discord Sister. That'd be something. I thought it was with an E. This is an A. Also, I wasn't sure if I was get, getting a Final Fantasy VII vibe. <laughs> <laughs> is it Eris? Is it Aerith? Is it, who cares? She stabbed through the back. Oh, no. Spoilers. Oh, if that's a spoiler, then you, you're you too young. Go away, youngin'. <laughs> people, people still consider the fact that Dumbledore dies in Harry Potter oh, to be no. a spoiler. Oh, yes. so, yeah. Oh, no. We, we, Guess Penny Cat. We are spoiling so many things right now. Oh, my goodness. Then you're going to tell me Bruce Willis is always dead. No. Yes, and Rosebud is the sleigh. <laughs> oh, boys. <sighs> so, hey, who, is that all silver? Mm, yeah, I think we'll get into the specifics later. All right, then. So, anyway, Seppi, what do you think of this episode? I feel like Twilight solved the problem. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, she kind of just handed it out to the Crusaders, like, well, wh- who said he had to stay there? I mean, it feels like if Twilight wasn't so caught up with quote-unquote studies that she basically could just solve the episode within like 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, true that, true that. But it's the Crusader, so they need more action. Yes. Vast Crusaders. I felt bad for Apple Bloom, though. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you know there's going to be a comic of them, Silver, done by IDW. What? Mask? Yes. That's been out for a while. Really? Oh, okay. It's... A very different beast from the old 80s cartoon. You mean the 70s? But 80s. Late uh, 70, 79. It was really early 80s. Late 90s. Late 70s. Wasn't the mask, like, as a comic, like, super violent? Oh, no, 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 not that one, not that one. Uh, Safi, you're making me feel old. <laughs> you're making me feel old. 
<coughs> but what? anywho, but anywho, um, as for me, I like this episode. This episode was fun. Fun fact about this episode, uh, it was spoiled before it got its official Release. premiere. Yeah, and I I don't know I saw it. Yeah, and it was fun looking at um raw tracks like how raw this episode was, and not hearing sound effects, hearing standing music that we're not supposed to use and whatnot. It was fun. But other than that, uh, this episode was fun. It shows the Crusaders. Uh, even though they bicker, they didn't hold a grudge and whatnot. I mean, it was really fun. And like Silver mentioned, it does show a bit more of uh, Mount Aerith and whatnot. So it was all good. Do you also just call it Mount Aerith? Yes, it's Mount Aerith. Because I don't know how to mention that confusing. one. It's confusing. So confused. <laughs> oh, I am mistaken. It was 85 to 86. Huh. All right. My bad. Sorry about that. Don't make me sound older than I already am. I feel bad. I feel bad, Dorman. Silver, remember that picture I sent you showing I had a toy? Yeah. <laughs> was was Every, everybody in the comics, in the comment section, tell Norman he should feel bad for being so bad. Shame, shame, shame. It was bad. <laughs> Anyway, oh, having Saipi here suddenly becomes this whole dynamic of, oh, I must be shame. Oh, no. <laughs> but anywho, if you guys haven't watched this episode yet, uh, pause here and go watch. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And well, here's our thought on said episode. We start off with the heroes of this adventure, the Kingdom Hearts Crusaders, running to Twilight saying that their butts are shining. And that means the map is calling them. And Twilight says, huh, it seems that you guys have to go to Mount Ares. Ares? Ares? However you say it. Yes. Ares. But Twilight's come a long way since uh, Starlight took up the reins and had that ah! moment. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Uh, back then, Twi Twilight was a bit jealous and she t couldn't follow because of reasons. Now she could and, well, <laughs> it's no skin off my nose kind of situation. I get to hang out with the Hippogriff and Sea Ponies, and I'm having a lot of fun. Research, you know, research purposes, yes, research. Well, it's kind of funny. Uh, Twilight has always put her faith in the map that it knows what needs to be done. It knows who to send. Even though for that first uh, season of it, back in season five, she was intensely jealous. It's like, I'm a princess with nothing to do. Keep this up and I'll be singing about how I want to adventure in the Great White somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to remember, Silver, uh, back then, uh, Twilight was the only pony who hasn't been called by the map yet. Until she and Fluttershy got the chance to go to wherever that was that they need to go. So, yeah. Yeah, but now she's not only willing to tag along, because in this case it makes sense. These are underage ponies going off outside Equestria. Yeah. yeah. They kind of need a chaperone. Yeah, and also it's killing two birds with one stone because Twilight need to hand off some documents to Silverstream's parents to sign off for field trip. Yay! Yay! Well, that, that we also just want to make sure your daughter gets a psychiatric evaluation. Oh. <laughs> I don't... We think she's kind of nuts a bushel. Uh, I, I think she's just hyper because she never been outside of Sequestria and also Mount Eris before. We find that she has an unhealthy obsession with stairs. We're having a slinky competition just to appease her. <laughs> Could you just imagine if they did that slinky competition in that Ace Ventura 2 movie scene? <laughs> trying to remember that scene. Uh, remember um, when Ace Ventura was meditating in the high mountains... Uh, of whatever place it was, and then it was really up high with stairs, and he played the uh, slinky and also sang the slinky song. <laughs> I have to watch that again. It's been a while. Oh, uh, that that thing stuck in my head because it's too funny, and that's not the first time he did it. He did it three times. <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> oh wow, that's something we need to watch. Anywho, uh, moving on, they take a train trip to. Sequestria or Mount Arif, and it seems that, huh, it's been a few moons, but the development of train travel has 
been really fast to spill up a train station to Malaris. Oh yeah, the Friendship Express now goes pan-continental. Mm-hmm. But if you think oh, is it about... pan-continental or, or transcontinental? I don't know. I, I don't know the term. Seppi, do you know the term? Pan is internal. What so term? What is term? It, is it transcontinental or pan-continental? Hell if I know. <laughs> uh, so as I think you found that. Travel in Constantinople. Istanbul, Constantinople. No, it's Istanbul, not Constantinople. Oof. But anywho, that's besides the point. We get back to the train or whatever, yes. And the CMC says, Twilight, you don't really need to chaperone us. We're big ponies. We can do this ourselves. And Twilight says, as much as you like to travel alone, I don't think the ponies that care about you would like you traveling alone. Anyway, I have to go to Mount Aries to meet. Silverstream's parents to sign this documentation. Yes, so let's go. Again, the the whole slinky thing. It's becoming borderline fetish. <laughs> your do- your daughter may need psychiatric help. It's fine, Silver. We don't bring it up. As long as we don't show her stairs, it'll be good. Oof. But anywho, in the train, Apple Bloom retells the story of how the adventurers save Equestria and stop the Storm King, namely Applejack. And Twilight says, wait, what? <laughs> that didn't happen. Applejack did not use her laser beam eyes to melt the Storm King, though that may have been a better role for her than the movie. Uh, Apple Bloom says, oh, you know, flourishing for dramatic effects. Let's just call it what it is. Lies! <laughs> but I just love how when she started the story, every pony was, ooh, this is a good story. And when she flubbed that last line, everybody turned their backs like, oh, okay. It's like, oh, hey, I was I was captured and enslaved at this point. <laughs> Thank you, Apple Bloom, for making me remember that horrible period in my life. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm surprised more than more of the train goers didn't, like, curl up into the field position. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. But anywho... That's, it's not okay! That's the point! <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, as they arrive at Mount Arif train station, uh, it seems that the place has developed, uh, well, a lot better than we first saw it in the movie. There's, uh, what you call this, shops, shores, uh, lampposts, boardwalks and whatnot, and it seems really awesome. Like, wow, that is so cool. And yeah, guys, yes, guys, yes, they have stairs now. <gasps> oh my god! Oh yes, there is. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> Silverstream's <laughs> obsession for with stairs is uncalled for, I guess. It's gone global. It's gone global. Well, what can you say when you stare into the abyss? Yeah, but anywho, <laughs> but anywho, uh, the CMC arrive and whatnot, and they ask Twilight. So, what do we do? How do we find our mission? Like, what do we do? Like, does the cutie map give us an address or something? And Twilight says, Haha, no. You'll know when you'll know. Uh, that's what your sister and I did before. So, uh, it could be as easy as walking up to someone and saying, Hey, what's going on? Or a paper flying in your face, smacking you with the answer and whatnot. Yes. Yes. Well, honestly, I think the Crusaders have a pretty smart system. They just say, Hey, does anyone have a problem that need, they need help with? Hey, how instantly. <laughs> yes. I'm kind of surprised the older ponies haven't tried this. Yeah, but nah, nobody uh, responds and go on the merry way. So, Twilight and the CMCs walk a bit away until somebody calls to them. And it's Terramar, uh, Silverstream's brother. And <laughs> I just love the banter that Apple Bloom just asks, like, Huh, a sea pony. How does a sea pony uh, have a hippogriff sister? <laughs> And it is revealed that he can transform Henshin. Although, the fact that Apple Bloom doesn't even... Apple Bloom was the one who told the story on the train. How does she not know that the Hippogriffs and the Sea Ponies are one and the same? Probably Applejack left that detail out. Applejack! How can I elaborate and make you sound more awesome if you don't give me the whole story to tell a lie about? <laughs> <laughs> uh... Apple Bloom, we need to talk about your lying fit. And we need to talk about your role in the movie. It was severely underrepresented. I got paid, didn't I? I don't even know you anymore. (laughs) (laughs) 
Ted. I don't even know you anymore. I don't know. Uh, but, but yeah. okay, let, but let's talk Terramar yes. for a sec, can we? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I've used the term generically nice to describe uh, characters like Cadence and Shining Armor in the past. You know, folks who they never say or do anything disrespectful, and the only people with whom they come into conflict with are the villains. And I kind of wonder about Terramar. Should I use the the generically nice brand for him? As he's a very polite and upstanding young griff, but he doesn't really have a lot by way of characterization other than the the conflict. I would say that because in this scenario here, he's playing a small part in the bigger picture. So for him to be the guide of the princess and whatnot seems... Logical. You wouldn't be rude to a princess and also the savior of your world or country or whatever it is in this scenario. Here. <laughs> tell that to Naysay. Yeah. No. Uh -huh. uh, no, seriously. Go tell him that to the Naysay. He needs to learn that. Oh, we, we need to talk about Naysay after this. <laughs> but anywho, um, yes, I, I don't think that putting the too nice label on him so soonish. I don't really think so, but you could also say that he suffers from the shining armor brother, big brother syndrome, where he's too vanilla-ish. Well, I would say he's a uh, he's the little brother, if I understand this correctly. Really? Yeah, I get the I get the little brother vibe. Oh yeah, definitely. He seems so stable. It, well, that's only in comparison to his sister. Uh, but anywho, um. Uh, do we need to say anything more about Terramar? Just that for offhand question of the general scope, we haven't really gotten to talk about him in action, where he is, I think, a very good representation of, for hippogriffs. Oh, yeah. He's polite, he's friendly, he doesn't carry a teud. He does have a, a fall from optimism later on, but that's kind of the point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he does... Uh, I, I I don't think we should talk about the conflict about now, so we'll talk about it when it pops up. Uh, but as for now, Terramar is an okay dude. He's polite, nice, kind, and helpful, and shows uh Twilight and the CMCs where his parents are. So yeah. Um, besides that, uh, as we go on, uh, the CMCs ask how you could transform and whatnot, and it is told to us, the audience, and also the CMCs via proxy, that uh, Queen Novo said that, okay, since everybody is um, wanting to split off to two different worlds, I'm tired of doing the whole transformation thing. Here's a piece of deep pearl so you can turn into hippogriffs ponies at will. Yes, go ahead. Wow, Norman, that, that makes her sound incredibly lazy. Have you seen uh, where she is now? Well, that's what I was about to say. It's like... I didn't think you can. The, I didn't think you could outdo the movie for making her look like a lazy <laughs> ruler. But here we are. Uh, okay, okay. In her defense, she. No, is... there's no need for defense. There's no need. I'm still calling for that hippogriff coup. <laughs> but in her def in her defense, her voice actor is expensive. So yeah. Even universe can afford her. Why can't my little pony? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's... <laughs> Who does she play in Steven Universe, by the way? <laughs> Norman, you, you have to explain these things. I don't know. I'm asking you. Who does she play in Steven? Uh, Bismuth. Ah. Well, have you noticed how short her lines were? Not in the most recent episodes. Yeah. Well, except for the... Except for the... One episode that premiered at San Diego Comic-Con, but we can't talk about that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, what, does she just go online and say hello? Oh, no, no. Uh, she had a few, but if you could count it, it was probably one page of script. That's about it. Well, either way, I just find it funny that Queen Novo, she broke the trend of the Wicked Queen, but she didn't necessarily make a strong case for a ruler. Like I mentioned before, it's one of those scenarios where it is very unfortunate that Hasbro couldn't bring her back due to monetary reasons. That's about it. I understand it. I am... I won't say I'm salty about it, but I do wish that we get to see Queen Novo, at least, you know. For, yeah. At, at, outside of flashbacks, yeah. yeah. But anywho. I'm still calling for that coup. <laughs> and what, put you as leader? 
I accept the nomination. Thank you, Norman. <laughs> but, but anyway, as the group moves on, we see the hippogriffs having their glad to be a hippogriff party or day, whatever it is that you're talking about. And we get to see the hippogriffs playing the trumpets and whatnot and doing stuff and reason stuff, 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 stuff. And Scootaloo says, oh, wow, we should. Uh, I'm sure glad we took a good day to come because, oh, boy, uh, we should. We, we probably would have missed this if we come on another day. And Terra March says, nah, they just do this every weekend. Hippogriffs loves to be hippogriffs. Yeah, suddenly my ego seems seems moderate by comparison. <laughs> uh, well, Wait, I'm going to start a new weekend tradition of glad I'm not everyone else. <laughs> so wait, don't you mean glad to be a silver quill day? Well, no, that would imply that I like getting blown up. No, <laughs> I'm just glad. I'm just glad that I'm not you peons. My God, I don't know how you live with yourselves. That is a pretty long day to say. I'll work on a... It's a working title. <laughs> so, anywho... Whatever you say, Batman. <laughs> uh, well, so, anywho, we get to see Skybeak, Tyramar's dad. And Tyramar introduced the group to Skybeak, uh, the CMCs. And then, before he could introduce Twilight, the Hippogriff says, Oh, Princess Twilight! And Screech! That is a fun Screech. Yes. Her ears. Well, it's still better than the usual. <laughs> Stop it, Neo. <laughs> but anywho, Skybeak introduced Princess Twilight to everyone, and Skybeak asks, "Um, what do we owe the pleasure of you visiting here?" And Twilight just says, "Oh yeah, um, your daughter in my school. Yeah, you need to sign this documentation so she could participate in field trips. Yes." And go for psychiatric help. I can't stress this enough. Oh, I think there's a professor or Dr. Cord or something like that. I heard he would have done wonders. Oh, yes. He'll he'll do wonders all right. We'll, we'll get to him eventually. What I find weird, though, is that Skype introduces her as she's Silverstream's sis- uh, teacher. Ooh, says the crowd. I like, and she liberated you all from the Storm King. I'm just saying. Who cares? Yeah, that is it's bad. It's you people today. <laughs> could, could you not see this, Silver? It's like, be impressed that my daughter is standing under Princess Twilight Sparkle, our savior. I'm just saying that you guys are starting to sound like the local news. Oh, that story is like so five minutes ago. We have new tragedies to report. <laughs> oh, well. It's interesting when people die. <laughs> Give us Jude Laundry. <laughs> oh, anywho. Skybeak says, um, sure, I'll sign it, but you have to join us for our party. Let's have some salmon juice and stuff. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> I know. And I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I remember. I remember specifically making it bleh. Phase. I know. The thought of, oh, God, no, you. Ew, ew, ew. So, anywho, uh, it just leaves Terramar and the CMCs, and yeah, they go walking, and before Terramar could say anything, Sweetie Belle just says, Shut up! What is that sound? It's so beautiful! And in my head here, you could insert so many things, like a metal concert, or death metal, or whatever it is in your head, or even jazz. Yes, jazz hands. Yes, uh, what's, oh. what's that, um... One meme with the yodeling uh, cowboy at the beginning of the music video. What? He he basically like yells like ah yeah! <laughs> that guy ah yeah yeah guy. Let me um not aye, not aye, yeah yeah guy. It's up it's up and it's up it, it's not the uh, pillar men scene from JoJo though. It's uh... oh that's much better. <laughs> oh it's it, JoJo of course. It's like five degrees of Jojo. <laughs> yes. But she says it's It not. always comes back to Jojo. Well, why not, right? So, anywho... Uh, why so? <laughs> why so, Norman? I don't know. I like, I like Jojo. But, anywho, while <laughs> Sebi searches yeah. for what she wants to tell well, us, we continue on with the CMCs. And it seems that Sweetie Belle really loves this place. She loves it a lot. Like, the hills are alive with the sound of music. 
And she likes to twirl. Apparently, she's big on twirling. Mm-hmm. Although, Norman, what, when you say she, you made her sound so vicious, like, shut up. <laughs> ah, bah, bah, bah. Well, <laughs> did, you, Norman, did you not see her it? Her name's <laughs> Sweetie Belle. She's like, wait, it's different than shut up. I found it. Okay. You got some serious angry belts going on there. <laughs> I found it. Alrighty then, let me see. Oh, wow. Uh, cannot play because reasons, but yes. Uh, maybe a silver no and could let me know. But anywho, uh, Terramar says that he has a problem that even though the, whatchamacallit, this place, the har- harmonizing heights are awesome and whatnot, I still can't decide on either Sequestria or here. So when the CMCs hear about problems, ooh, this is fun. We we found our problem, and yes, you have a problem. That's good. We're so happy that you're suffering this inner conflict. <laughs> Yay! And Tedemar looks at them, worry. Uh, should I be afraid? Like what? <laughs> yes. Yeah. This this is where the whole uh, generically nice thing. I mean. He's not reacting to this with anything other than the confused look, which when I think about it, that's what they do with Cadence a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. I mean, picture Cadence, Cadence's style of humor is someone around her is acting like a complete goofball, and she gives them a funny look. And that's that's the joke. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I haven't really paid much attention to Cadence that much, but I do see your point. Really? Really? Oh, how that's so refreshingly honest. Uh, but, but, but. Oh, you've been paying attention to her butt, Norman. I didn't know you swung that way. No. Uh, but anyway. She's married, Norman. What are you thinking? How could you, Norman? Let's move on. Let's move on. No, Norman. <laughs> we, we, we've got to stick with which to beat you, and we're going to take it. We don't have much time, Silver. <laughs> but anyway, the CMC's. Uh, start a list. Do you know if Twilight did anything right, it was the list. So, Sweetie Belle starts off by saying, what's the benefit of living here in Mount Aries? Uh, big open fields, fresh air, um, clear blue skies, open field. I mentioned open field, right? Yes. But anywho, uh, it was a lot of fun. So, you should probably live on Mount Aries. And Taramar says, you haven't checked out Sequestria yet. So, how could you be so one-sided? And before uh, the CMCs could answer, Twilight comes in and shows that, hey, look, guys, look at what, look at what I want. Yay, I'm having fun for research. Research. Yes. Although I'll say uh, Sweetie Belle does sound like a political pundit right now. <laughs> How can you be so one-sided and close, close to the opposite ideals? Because I'm not part of the liberal agenda. <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, but anywho. Yes, I went there. <laughs> I went there. Oh, no. But anywho. And I'm not sorry, Norman. I'm not sorry. Oh, please. But anywho. Uh, Terramar brings them to the ocean to meet his mom. And Apple Bloom says, how are we going to get to Sequestria? I mean, we ponies don't breathe underwater. And Terramar shows that by holding my hand, I shall transform you into sea ponies. Henshin. Da, 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 da. Oof. And yes, our heroes become sea ponies. And Scootaloo is really, really enjoying this a lot. It feels like she's swimming. Yay! Or it flying. It like she's flying, yes. yeah. She's already swimming. Yes, flying. My bad. But yay, still. But isn't that a little heartbreaking, though? Scootaloo's like, I can finally feel like a genuine Pegasus. It's like, oh, Scootaloo, I feel so bad for you. Uh, that rhymes. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. So anyway, as they uh, swim around, we, we get to see Sequestra in the flash format. Before we, before that, we had Toon Boom. Now we are dumbing down the animation quality a bit. But still, it looks good. Oh, but that, I, I'd say it looks quite lovely. Yes. Eh? Compared to the movie. I mean, the Toon Boom... The, well, in the movie, it was dark and foreboding, and everyone... Was afraid of the ponies. Uh-huh. Now it's it's bright, filled with vitality, and I'm gonna say, Scootaloo, I think makes a better case for living there than Sweetie Belle did because Sweetie Belle 
was all about harmonizing heights. Uh, yeah, so that, yeah, she, that's weird. pretty much all she's about like during this uh, sequence. It's like, oh yeah, uh, live here because I like this one aspect of this place that you currently live in. Yeah. It's like, okay, is there anything else? Nope. It's like living in Justice. New York. Justice. Well, New York has a populace. Harmonizing Heights does not. Yeah, but if you live in New York, you get Central Park. Isn't that worth the hassle of getting mug? Wow, dude. I didn't know you were so bitter. <laughs> That's the only thing I know yeah, of Central know. Park. What? You get mugs. <laughs> okay, how about Florida? You get crazy. <laughs> You get heat stroke and a lot of rain. <laughs> well, I do get uh, heat stroke and rain here, so no difference, I guess. <laughs> but anywho, we get to see Terramar's mom, uh, Ocean Flow, and he introduced. I love that name, by the way. <laughs> uh, and he introduced uh, them to the CMCs and also Princess Twilight. And yay! It seems that the mom already know who Princess Twilight is and gives uh, Ocean Flow the documentation for the field trip and whatnot. Yes, but before she signs, uh, she invites Twilight for some fun and stuff and also looking at baby pictures, which Terramar says, oh no, mom, stop that. Although meanwhile, all the sea ponies are whispering to each other, hide your pearls, Princess Twilight is back. Oh boy, yeah, Princess Twilight, oh boy. But anywho, um, now we get to see sequestra a bit more and yeah sweetie bell doesn't seem to enjoy the place but scootaloo is which, in a water <laughs> <laughs> which is i think it does her a disservice i mean no, no one was counter arguing with her in uh harmonizing heights because yes. well they hadn't been here yet mm-hmm. but but now it's making her look like this terrible grouch and killjoy that is also true that's also true and you know what? I'm going to speed things up a bit because we have a musical number coming up. And yes, the CMCs, uh, after the visit to Sequestria, the CMCs had a hard time deciding for Terramar, which is the better place because Scootaloo enjoys Sequestria while Sweetie Belle enjoys uh, harmonizing heights. <laughs> like you guys mentioned, there's one aspect of a place where, yes, um, you're limited to this section, yes. So, anywho, uh, musical number plays. It's not a bad song, but I totally forget how it sounds. Yes, I love the wordplay. It has maybe a, a forced rhyme scheme, or sometimes a little bit of a forced pacing to it. But the, like I say, the word, the wordplay, and the rhymes are so much fun. And then, of course, Scootaloo cemented herself as my favorite of the CMC with that song. For all intents and porpoises, and she hy- <laughs> hyphens a, a dolphin. It's like she just made a pun. How can I not love her? She is, she is my favorite. Yeah. Oof. Best, best CMC. It is now decided for all time. But in the song, if you get to see that eagle is really clutching onto Sweetie Belle's hoof, like that's gotta hurt. That's okay. She's got marshmallow hooves. <laughs> exactly. Takes after her sister. Ha ha. Anyway, at the end of the musical, uh, the CMC's bicker and says that don't ever talk to me again. And, oh, they don't talk to each other and they're grumpy face. Terramar says, like, you guys are not helping. I'm going away. They, they bicker and whatnot till Twilight comes in and says, what's the matter with you? Oh, she's from a new college. What's the matter you? <laughs> yes. But anywho... Uh, they explain the situation to Twilight where Terramar has to choose a home before time runs out. Ooh. And I, I, and Twilight just says, why should he choose? Couldn't he just pick both? And before uh, they could conclude the solution or find the solution, uh, Terramar's parents come and, oh, it seems that they haven't been seeing each other for a while now. And yay, uh, it seems that the Hippogriff and the Sea Ponies are mingling. Well, I I, I have to interject real quick because we're, we're missing something important. Oh. Uh, yeah, one criticism that I think Safi mentioned earlier is that Twilight basically solves the problem for them. Mm-hmm. Yes. That she says, why does he have to choose? And they're like, oh, yeah. But here's the thing. 
Terramar's family doesn't just appear. The CMC invites them uh, that they get everyone together. And this is this gathering, this re- maybe a replacement of Proud to be a Hippogriff, is the result of the CMC reaching out and building a bridge between two communities. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'd argue, yes, Twilight got them on the right track, but this is still the CMC's uh, success building bridging a community rather than just even one family. That's awesome. Uh, well, to me, I, I forgot the line in scripting, so it's not fresh in my head, that part. But still, uh, it seems that the CMC's decide to throw a beach party. Yay! And they look for Terramar, and the CMCs couldn't find him anywhere until they look to the right of the scene. Oh, there he is. That's going to be that way with Applejack's parents, too. Oh, we were always just off screen to the right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Terramar says, I don't care. I'll just live here, and I'll be around both worlds. Yeah. And the CMC says they're sorry, but you know what? You should come with us because uh, there's a surprise. And said surprise is beach party. Beach party. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sorry there, Norman. For a minute there, I thought you said... Uh, That's not a word! Party. It's like, oh, everyone's there just to complain. <laughs> no! That's the, uh, that's the Griffin holiday. Ah, this this oh, water's too cold. We'll, oh, we'll get to that episode soonish. We'll get you. You call it? You call this a sandwich? It's not even sandy. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, gross. But anywho, uh, the parents meet with Terramar, and they just mentioned that son, uh, we never meant for you to feel like you have to choose between the two worlds. We just want you to be happy, and if you feel happy living in two worlds, that's good. We support your decision. You can live with me, and you can live with mom. You have two homes now, so yay! Two bedrooms and whatnot. Woohoo! Oh, two sets of presents. I don't think so. At, at Christmas. Sorry, whatever they call it. Whatever those crazy sea ponies call it. Oh, no, no. Hearts warming. It's like. I don't think they call it hearts no. warming. I thought you said, like, Christmas in Equestria is hearts warming. Hippogriffs have their own holiday. It is, but. Yeet. Oh, yeah, I have no idea in that case. Kwanzaa? Oh, God. It's non denominational. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just just saw that episode yesterday. It's like, happy holidays, every creature. Screw you. It's happy hearth warming, <laughs> said Chef. Said Chef oh, Dunn. God, I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, said Walter. Safi, I don't know if you know this, but Walter is Chef Dunham. <gasps> I know. <laughs> but the character... After all, Silver, that's like me telling you, Silver, it's not Twilight Sparkle. It's Tara Strong who said that. <sighs> what? My worldview is crumbling. Exactly. <laughs> Up is down, left is right. Black is the new white, and look out for zebra crossings. But anyway. Actually, Silver Orange is the new black. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, anyway, DCMC's mention. Oh, one thing we forgot to mention uh, both place. Have somebody you love, and he, uh, they mark it out in the list, and they are happy. And Terramar says, "Ah, oh, thanks, guys." And wait, are, is your buddy glowing? And it seems the mission is over. Yay! So we are successful. <laughs> Yay! But then they just up and leave. They don't even stay for the party. It's like, "We'll see you. Bye. Come visit our place. It's way cooler." Don't you forget about me. Oh yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, I saw the. Uh, I was trying to remember what song they used in the actual uh, production file. Uh, that's the song. It's like, it's like, oh, are we sure? I can't. We can't have that in the show. That'd be hilarious. Nope. Cost money. Ah. But and with that, um, the episode ends. YouTube copyright claims. <laughs> so anywho, we have reached the end, and let's hit into final thoughts. Silver, what do you think of said episode? Well, I, this was a lot of fun. I. Uh, I commented in a previous podcast that a large part of the first half of this uh, season has been the the main six trying to shut down ideas rather than actually explore them. So here's the the CMC going into this place with sort of wide-eyed wonder, and it's a lot more fun because of that. I think it's a much more positive episode as a result. 
And so I thoroughly enjoyed it. I love seeing the changes to the hippogriffs and all that they've undergone. And I, I do like Terramar. I, I talk about the whole generically nice title, but that's because, well, we don't know a lot about him as a character with quirks or personality. Mm-hmm. Anyone who's seen, um, anyone who's seen the clip of the Kieran song, that we'll be getting later on this season. Yeah, yeah. You know that you can have a, a new character who has a lot more personality. True that, true that. And I think the, in this scenario here, they're playing it a bit safe because the last time that they introduced a new character, a lot of people hated him. Him? Oh, Nese. No. No. Sheldon. <laughs> yeah. Mudbriar. Oh, well. <laughs> Eh, jeeps get mad, but yeah, we all, it's all good. Yeah, let's... Th- there was one thing uh, that I saw fans comment on about the moral. They're like, a lot of people said, you know, it's all well and good, but sometimes you can't have it both ways. Oh, true, yeah. But, well, nah, I'm, I'm going to argue against that. Maybe you can't have it both ways, but very often life is not so binary. Especially here in America, we, we're... In a phase where we're told it's binary, vote this way or that, you're either for or against it, A, B, uh, no compromise, a lot of extremism. And this is sort of a reminder to the young, There's there it, maybe there isn't a way to have all of it, but there often is another option if you're willing to look. And I think that's true. All righty then. But anywho, uh, is that all, Silva? That'll do it. All righty then. And Seppi, what about you? Pretty much the same thing. Unfortunately, because Sweetie Belle is my favorite of the CMC, I can't say I liked her this episode. It's all she felt too biased. <laughs> it's all you know? Yeah, I understand, I understand. And, and it breaks my heart because she is my favorite of the uh, CMC, but seeing her like this, it's like, Sweetie, no, why? <laughs> uh, why? Give her time. <laughs> What, she'll become a crazy cat lady? <laughs> yeah, like her sister. Yeah, okay, my, my. <laughs> Oof. But anywho, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. Um, I've seen it more than once. Uh, the original format and also the pre... What you call this? Pre-production uh, format. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, looking at how the world has changed a lot. Or we had world building. It was interesting to see. And yeah, we get to see more of the world from the hippogriffs and whatnot since their liberation from the Storm King. In all honesty, there was no liberation or whatnot. They just went into hiding. Well, now they're not afraid. So anywho, uh, this episode was a lot of fun. This song was okay, but not memorable. Probably it's one of those situations where I need to listen to it a hundred times before I can get it stuck in my head. So okay. Uh, other than that, the story or the moral here was okay. Who says that you need to choose between one side or the other? Why not both? And yes, uh, that's my opinion on it. So yes, uh, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, it's time for a return to the comics as we look at the third issue of Legends of Magic, starring Miss Main and Super Adorable Luna. Yay! That'll be fun to watch. That'll be fun to watch. So that will be next week's thing. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themysterygman.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show Twitter account is at the MBS Show. My personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me online on the YouTubes under After the Fact. I I post every week on Equestria Daily a comic review or editorial. And because we're now in the era of double viewings per weekend, there's going to be a lot of Pinkie Pie Says Goodnights on DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. So look for that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Seppi, how about yourself? And you can find me anywhere if you just type in Anime Christy, no space, under uh, DeviantArt and Twitter mostly. I'm, I'm very active on those goof platforms. And also... Look at my pin on my Twitter, because then you'll find a coffee page. I want three bucks. I need my coffee. 
Alrighty then, alrighty then. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyBerLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. You'll hear this. This is what you'll be hearing. Us talking about Pony episodes, comics and also movies. Sometimes other things. I think last week we reviewed Princess Bride, right Silver? Yes, we we reviewed and I believe we quoted just about every meme in the in the movie. Uh, one of my favorite reviews, man. Next to Kung Tao. Yes. Much fun. When I was working at Wendy's. <laughs> oh, never mind. I miss you guys. Never Oof. mind. We'll we'll do something with you soonish. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> yes. I've missed pro- you guys a lot. <laughs> you probably won't enjoy it though. <laughs> But anywho, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a, a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank you, I would like to thank Tristan, Lurker Cat, Master of Lag, Lucky Knight, Charles, Amy, and also Starstream. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, keep being awesome. Stay awesome. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill, and I am still the OG Hippogriff. And I am the Safi. I am just a simple unicorn, even though the icon on this show says I'm a Pegasus. Really? Yes. We'll work on that. Oh, wow, okay. We need to work on that somehow. (laughs) I don't have a graphic design tool anymore. I need to hook up my old PC to access Illustrator. Oh, well. Uh, yeah. But anywho, we'll guys see you next week then. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. I do wonder with the transformation, do they have to use some kind of coin, pop cap, or fruit to transform? I'm gonna say it'd be funny if they had a magical girl <laughs> transformation. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. Just imagine Terramar going through like 50 poses. For love of justice, I am C-Pony Terramar. Terramar.